All right, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Hunter Smith with Metastock, and I'm excited to bring you another webinar with uh, one of our, our top educators and, and traders here today, uh, Mr. Joe Duffy. Uh, before we, we get started, I actually wanted to uh, cover the disclaimer. Uh, we do this at the beginning of every webinar. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins. Uh, and it's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of our software, any trading strategies, or information provided in connection with the company. Now that we have legal stuff out of the way, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at, uh, at, in the world. Um, it's a very cold afternoon here in Utah, uh, but I am excited to present this webinar today, uh, especially because it is with uh, a, an educator of ours, uh, Mr. Joe Duffy, who uh, is one of the few, one of the, the only and the first uh, of our um, educational partners uh, that we have actually put together under a new banner called Metastock Enlighten. Now, our Enlighten program is based off of the philosophy that uh, traders can get the best tools in the world, but if they don't understand how to use those tools or interpret those tools, that it's not really going to do them any good. So one of the things that we wanted to do here with Metastock and Lighten is partner up with some of our best educators and put together a complete package, a complete approach to trading. Um, now, I'll get a little bit more into that towards the end of the webinar, but the reason that we uh, invited Joe to do this was because we really wanted a quality educator, someone that enjoys uh, teaching individuals and has more of a, a holistic approach to trading, um, not just numbers driven, but also understands a lot of the philosophy in trading. And he's a, he's actually had a very accomplished career as an institutional prop trader. Uh, he's a three-time top 10 finisher in the United States Trading Championships. He has had very, very high percentage real money annualized returns. Um, He's also managed a proprietary FX trading book uh, for one of the largest banks. We've been lucky enough to have him do a couple of webinars for us and even more lucky um, that we've been able to take his systems and actually put them within Metastock. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over here to Joe. Joe, can you hear me okay? Uh, might want to let's take a look here. I can't hear you. Uh, you might Hold still on. be on mute. Uh, ah, you, there we go. You got me now. Okay, yeah. Just uh, after your great introduction about how good I am, I can't even push the right button on my mic. So there we go. No pressure. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're good to go. Uh, we are. Yes. I I just uh, sent you a request. Okay. Go ahead and share your screen, and you should yep. be good to go. Okay. So if I X that, Hunter, am I at the top right, am I going to lose this, uh, the webinar or not? No? No. You should okay. be fine. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Leave webinar. No? Okay. Well, that's not the one I need to be doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, neuroscience and trading. Okay. First of all, guys, I'm not a neuroscientist, uh, not a real scientist in a real scientist is probably mortified that I'm doing this, but um, I've had a real interest in it, not only from a market perspective, just but from uh, a general life perspective and, and how it dovetails with um, things that are, have really come from the, uh, uh, from the uh, Far East and stuff like uh, meditation and uh, spiritualism and so forth like that. Uh, things that, for instance, Wayne Dyer would have written about uh, 30 years ago that were quote, which I would have considered, quote, pop psychology, um, now actually have a basis in science. So we're going to go through a little bit about that and we'll tie it into uh, how it helps uh, 
how it can help us in trading because understanding how your brain works and how actually the DNA of all of our brains are, are wired is the first step in, um, in overcoming some of the problems that every single person has to overcome because we're all wired to some degree, um, to some extent at least, uh, in the same way. So we all have the same problems, okay? So the things that you beat yourself up for, I've been through, uh, Paul Tudor Jones has been through, everyone's been through them to some degree. Okay, so this is my layman's interpretation of, of things that I've learned about how your brain functions. Uh, once you understand it, once you, you kind of grasp it, it's, it's really not hard at all. Uh, there's no, uh, the science comes in and they can actually test this stuff now um, and actually measure the response in your brain. So that's how we know this. But the actual uh, doing of it is an actual corrections and so forth are, are not difficult at all. Now, if I said to you right now, um, Stop multitasking if that's what you're doing. Um, no one would do that. And the reason you wouldn't do it um, is because you have a belief in your belief system, in your brain, that you can multitask and that you're good at it. Now, the science of that is that we actually can't multitask. When we try to do that, we are slower, uh, we have poor or worse results. And uh, despite that, we continue with the belief that we are good at it and that we can do it, okay? So uh, that's just one example of how your brain um, tells you something that, that isn't true. Now, following that up, how often do we act against our own self-interest? That sounds weird why would you act against your own self-interest but people do it all the time and there's tons of examples of it and it's the most important part right now to understand about this is that you can see someone else do it quite easily we've all had the experience where we've watched somebody uh, doing something and you're going to yourself and you know this can only end one way and it, of course it does but that person can't see it um, they're just like Wile E. Coyote going off the cliff. And conversely, you've done it. Um, you have, uh, you have uh, done something that you couldn't really see. Maybe later you could see it, but at the time you couldn't see it, and it was not in your own self-interest or your own best interest. Now, the reason this is, is the brain and the science of the brain is – it is not one big homogeneous unit. It is, has many divisions, and a lot of times those those different parts of the brain uh, don't work together in your own interests, or they don't work together at all. They can sometimes be in conflict. Right? So that's a very important thing to understand, that parts of the brain can often be in conflict, and that's uh, everyone has that, and that's one of the natural causes of, of difficulty in trading. And we're going to get how to we're going to get to how to um, remedy some of these things, and it's really not that hard. Uh, but I just want to explain to you first um, what we're going to try to remedy. So just recognizing it that that there is divisions and they can work against each other is, is sort of the first step. Uh, science now tells us that 95 to 98 percent of the thoughts that you have in a day are either useless or self-sabotaging. Think about that for a sec. That's that's uh, that's crazy. Um, your brain is also like a PVR. Um, it's uh, it wants to do the same thing over and over and over again. At least part of your brain does. It wants to do the same thing over and over and over again, even if the results it's attained in the past aren't what another part of your brain wants. Okay, so this tendency to be a PVR and do the same things over is it's a very important factor to understand that that's how your brain works because once you understand it that's the first step to being able to change it okay and it will resist change trust me um, how, how much does that resist change well uh, if you've ever been to a seminar or Tony Robbins or whatever or read a book and you know hard not to agree with everything like that um, 80% of the people who go to those don't make any changes at all, zero. 
Um, so they can, the brain will allow you to lap it up and feel good about it. But when it comes to change, it doesn't want to do it. Okay. Now we're all obviously different to some degree. So some of these problems are going to be harder to overcome for others than they are uh, for some people, but uh, everyone can do it. The brain also works, and we all know this, at a subconscious level. And uh, in fact, a lot of what we do, a lot of our reactions to, to stimuli um, in, in similar situations are programmed now at a subconscious level where we don't even think about them. A perfect, or not a perfect example, but one example of how your subconscious sort of just drives your life is if you're getting your car and you're driving somewhere and you, you really don't even remember driving there or you, you get into the car when you're supposed to be going to place B, but you start driving to work or to school or whatever you do every day because your brain's sort of on autopilot. Your subconscious is driving you. So um, our belief systems can be, um, and our the, the fact that the uh, the brain is a PVR can be deterrence to getting out of trading what we what another part of the brain actually wants, which is to be successful and make some money at it. Um, another example of how different parts of the brains can be conflicting is I've just told you that um, there's a part of the brain, a large part of it, um, that holds your belief systems that wants certainty. So it actually prefers, uh, even though this isn't happening to you at a conscious level, it prefers the certainty of making the same mistakes over and over again um, than it does to, you know, having to change and 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 form no new neural pathways. Now, talk about conflict. There's another part of your brain um, that that it, it sort of embraces uncertainty. Um, and that's where if you go to Las Vegas, you're attracted to the uncertainty, even though, and this goes back to, does our brain act in our own, against our own self-interest? Everyone who knows, and especially if you're a big gambler, you've, you've read books and you know a lot about gambling, and you know that the edge in Vegas is, you know, 4% or so, depending on what game you're playing. So you know that over the long run, you're not going to win. But the same people still go, and then they will pretend they have a system, or they pretend they have that. But in a sense, they know that it's not to get, not in their own self-interest to go, but they do it anyway. Okay, so that's understanding that that the brain has different parts; they don't always work together, and uh, it's going to resist change, and that it works like a PVR. Those are all things that you need to understand about the brain before you can actually start to make changes. In fact, understanding them is 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 the, the probably the first step uh, in a change. Okay, um, why are my slides not moving here? Okay. Okay, um, so when we're we're talking about things that we want to do um, with the brain, um, we all see the reality through our the own little pinhole of our experience, okay? and someone else sees it through the pinhole of their experience. But neither one of those is the true reality. The true reality is a much bigger picture than that. And again, under, understanding that concept and be able to separate yourself from the pinhole reality that you're seeing. Um, is another first step in in making changes. So we can talk about um, saying things like, "Oh, money management's more important than your trading system or your your technique, or psychology is the biggest part of uh, of um, of trading." You know, whatever, blah blah blah. As I've written here. Uh, that's not enough to say that stuff. It's just like saying, "Well, if I'm in Los Angeles and I need to get to San Diego," and somebody tells you, "Well, it's south." it's it's not helping you you know you need a car you need directions you need a map blah 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 like that okay uh, that's what you need and just saying oh money management's more important or you can't trade without understanding um, you know or discipline another word that gets thrown around a lot it's it's just not easy as saying I'm gonna have discipline you need to understand why you don't have it and then how you can fix it <clears throat> Okay, so one of the ways I like to um, to like to look at this is all the thoughts and, and emotions that you have when you're trading. You know, fear of missing out, fear of taking a loss, uh, fear of not being right. 
um, they're all like a bunch of kids or children in a nursery school. And you can't give in to the thought or the kid that's standing on his chair um, screaming he wants his own way. Or you can't give in to the kid that wants his ice cream uh, for dinner. Okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, if you do give in to the kid that has his ice cream for dinner, that's the guy, that's to say the guy that wants to uh, just, um, you know, chase the market. I have to get in, just, just give me in. You know, boom. And you know how that works. Well, you had your ice cream, but now you're going to be sick after because it, it was not a good trade. So someone has to be the adult or the nursery school teacher in that. Someone has to be able to stand back, understand that your brain's got all these different parts, you know, and they're all sort of uh, working not harmoniously at times. And you have to be able to stand back and say, um, I'm going to separate myself from this. And, and I know the right things to do because when I've – I, I figured those out. I do know them. If you've traded at any all, you know what to do. But when the trade's on, you don't do it. Okay? And that's because of all the, the different conflicts. But if you understand that those conflicts are present, uh, it's much easier to step back out and have a plan for how to um, for for how to deal with that. Okay? And that's where the whole thing of um, conscious awareness comes that's a big thing now or or mindfulness which is just really just what i said just being able to step outside yourself and look at the bigger picture and uh and and know that things are um are going to be in conflict and that you have to be the, the teacher or you have to be the adult and you have to uh follow the plan that you had set out before um in order to you know, combat the kid who's standing on his chair screaming or the kid who wants his uh, ice cream for dinner, okay? Somebody has to be the adult, okay? And uh, when you can practice stepping outside yourself, when you can practice mindfulness, um, you can practice conscious and awareness, it's very easy to do that. You'll know your triggers. Uh, you'll get that feeling that, oh, I have to get in this market. Or or you're sitting, your tray's near its stop, and you say, ah, I'm just going to, I'm going to move it this time. Right? So that's your trigger. At that point, that's your trigger to stand back and say, okay, um, what do I know to do in this situation? Because these actions never turn out well in the long run. They never turn out well in the long run, and we know that. All right, so how to stop them, again, is just basically you know, getting outside yourself and, and uh, understanding that there's going to be conflict within your, your head and, uh, and, and that your brain's not always your friend. Okay? Um, and that may seem all simplistic, but I think for me, um, it was a huge key um, that that your brain's not always going to work in your self-interest, that it has many parts that work opposite each other, and that someone has to be the adult and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. Okay, So um, <clears throat> there's a quote by a, a guy, Eckhart Tolle, who's, who's written a few books, but I think his famous one was uh, The Power of Now which is about staying in the moment and mindfulness and so forth. And he said, you are not your thoughts and fears, um, or you're, you're not the culmination of the thoughts and fears in your head, and who are you then? Well, you're the one that knows this. You're the adult um, that, that stands outside and, and, can, uh, and can recognize the, the uh, behaviors that aren't going to turn out well for you that you've done in the past and, uh, and, and cut them off before they get um, too far down the road. Now, the great thing about this is, now, at first, it, it does take the ability to stand outside, um, but as the more you do it, then you're starting to PVR that behavior, and that will start to, to form new uh, pathways in your brain, and that will become um, your default behavior. Okay? Now, the other thing that, that um, your brain likes and it makes it happy uh, is decisions. Your brain actually gets a, a little shot of, you know, good chemicals when you make a decision. So making a decision is always a good thing. So take that stop or, or um, you know, make the decision before the market opens how you're going to trade and, and then follow that. The brain gets happy with that. The other thing that makes the brain happy, and again, this is science, how the, how the dopamine or whatever gets registered in your brain is, is a, a, an attitude that, uh, pretty good is good enough. Okay, um, if you're striving to be perfect, 
then what happens in your brain is it gets overwhelmed and it gets stressed and you've got all the conflict going on. So if you're striving to be perfect that you're never going to have a loss or that, um, you know, if I just had one more indicator on my chart, then it would be perfect. Those kind of things, even though they're natural, and I think everybody does them, uh, they are counterproductive to you actually getting what you want. So uh, make decisions, makes you happy. Um, and in fact, a great example of a decision making you happy, if you've ever been in a trade that's so far underwater that you just can't stand it anymore, actually when you take it off, no matter how big the loss is, you actually feel better. Okay, so make the decision earlier. Uh, brain likes decisions. Um, uh, brain likes the fact that y you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't feel overwhelmed and it can better work together. Okay. Um, okay. So I think that's, uh, that's the introduction or the, uh, the, the part I wanted to talk to you about, uh, neuroscience, uh, little other practical things that can help you. Um, meditation, which is really, you can, you'll, you can Google it on YouTube and, and uh, find plenty of places how to do it. You can do it five, six, seven minutes a day, and it's really going to help you um, um, clear the slate sort of uh, in your head, and, and you'll be able to process things better. Uh, journaling, um, if you do it right, helps. I don't think you need to write massive journals. You don't need to write down. Um, you're not writing down what you just did. Uh, you're writing down, you know, the reasons why you did it and uh, and then an evaluation. Uh, but even more important than that of, 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 of writing down what you did is uh, is before you start, under, uh, uh, write down what you want to do. Your brain, again, it, it, it when you're a kid, it's it's like the Matrix movie. It really does just download everything for the first seven years and, the, and then just runs on basically 95% um, of that experience in your subconscious for the rest of your life. So in order to change that, um, the way to change that as an adult is through repetition. So you come in every morning or every night when you do your work for the next day and you write down, you know, here's my goal. Um, you know, I, I just want to, uh, um, I'm going to trade this setup. Uh, I, I'm going to try to get in in this area. And if it gets here tomorrow and I have a position, I'm going to take a profit in it. And, and that's it. And you can write yourself little notes like, you know, I'm, I'm developing as a trader. I'm getting better discipline, blah, 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 uh, those kind of things. But write positive things about yourself and what you plan to do. Um, telling yourself isn't good enough. Putting them on a sticky note on your screen isn't good enough. You need to actually write them down um, because then you're engaged in the process. Okay. Uh, those things all may seem simple. And again, these things might have been pop psychology uh, 25 or 30 years ago. Now we know um, that's how the brain is. Like, you know, if you squeeze an orange, you're going to get orange juice and not lemon juice or apple juice or pineapple juice. You're going to get orange juice. So whatever, the market's always going to squeeze you. So whatever's in you um, is going to come out. So we've got to get the right things in us. And one of the ways to do that is to write down what we want to be. Uh, pretend that we're that already. Start playing that role. And eventually um, we'll get, we will get there. Okay, uh, sounds simple, but it actually it's worked. I'm, I'm certainly better at this now than I was a few years ago, uh, just by doing things like this. Okay, so that's uh, that's the the part uh, on psychology. I hope that it uh, was interesting to you. It's it's powerful stuff, and it's not difficult, and anyone can do it. But you've just got to, like I said, your brain's going to resist it. This may sound good to you right now. But 80% of you won't adopt any because it's it will mean some changes. Okay, so uh, at first there is some some ability to stand outside yourself and say no, this is the right thing to do, and this is what we're going to do, until that repetition starts to become a new habit. Okay, and uh, how you think about things, your thoughts become your habits. You know, your habits become your your beliefs, and um, you know that becomes your life. So um, how you think about things initially. And uh, how you believe you're going to do is very important to uh, your success in, uh, in trading. Okay, on to uh, the, uh, the scoop. Um, okay, for some reason, I'm not... Hold on, guys. For some reason, my meta stock doesn't want to open here. Okay, just give it a second, I guess.
Okay, I don't, I can't. Okay, I don't know why this, oh, here we go. Okay, just took a minute, here we go. Okay. Um, sorry about this, guys. I um, don't know how I got that rid of that before. Okay, well, let's just get her down there for now. Anyway, um, as I as alluded to before, uh, trading doesn't have to be complicated. We want to make it more complicated because our brain thinks just one more thing is is going to make it easier or better in its quest for perfection. And again, counterintuitive as that is, it doesn't. You know, keeping it simple is is better. However, with this huge caveat. Um, not too simple. Uh, the market is like layers of an onion, and the answer uh, to trading is never in the first layer, okay, or even the second. It's often down to the third. So you do have to, you don't have to make trading uh, overly complicated. And in fact, what happens is most people overcomplicate the, the first layer with 20 different things, thinking that it's helping them, but it isn't. It's just complicating the first layer when the real answers. Um, fall after the first layer down to the second and third, like like peeling an onion. Okay, and we're going to show a couple of examples of that in a minute. Okay, so basically there's several aspects in the uh, in the package that we have with Metastock, but this is the 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 uh, the, the flagship, and this is the scoop indicator. Um, okay, so I've got uh, uh, Amazon up here right now, but I can go. Uh, anywhere. In fact, let's go back and start at the beginning uh, with Apple uh, alphabetically. Uh, basically, it's this: uh, when this is a 20 period average, and this is a 200. I'm trading long when the 20 is above the 200. So that's kind of my big uh, my big filter, okay? And I'm going to actually go for end of day traders. What I do is start at the weekly. So let me start there. Okay. So same thing. Uh, the 20 is above the 200. I want to trade long. If the scoop histogram, which is the blue here, is above zero, then I want to trade long. And um, it helps if the black line, which is the scoop trend, is is above zero as well. Now, if I've got all three of those conditions present, when the scoop oscillator, which is the red line, slips down below zero, um, that's when I want to look to buy. Okay? So um, if you can follow my cursor right in here, right in here, right in here, uh, those are potential buys. This is the first layer of the onion, okay? I can get a little more complicated. I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm going to go through a few um, uh, simple things here. So I'm going to mark these lines here on, um, on Apple. So when we go down to the daily now, we're going to know where they are, okay? So those are the places where we're actually, oh, this one should probably be over one. Okay, there. Those are the places where Scoop started to 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 um, you know to, to to get below zero. We don't know ahead of time, obviously, where they're going to turn, but those lines are for reference only, right now. So when we go to the daily, okay. So let me scroll back here. Okay, so what we're looking for um, on the we however to have our our big picture set up on the weekly. Now on the daily, what we're going to do is uh, just look for a divergence. Now, do we have a divergence here? Um, well, we had, I guess, a bit lower close here and a bit higher high here, so you could call that a divergence. When we get that divergence, that's our signal that it's okay uh, to go ahead and, and, and buy. So uh, remember, divergence is based on closes. So right now, we have this close lower than this close, whereas this is the uh, scoop oscillator is higher. Um, that's basic divergence, higher oscillator, lower price. Now, the, here is a bigger one, obviously, and a, and a better one because it's a little more broad. We have lower oscillator or lower price here, um, where and the scoop is is rising. So we we set up on the weekly, then we go down to the next layer of the onion, which is the daily, and that's where we we uh, we take our entries. It's really simple. Uh, you're going to find if you're following a decent portfolio of stocks, you're going to find stuff almost every day. Um, to do. Okay. Another one right here. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go to a let's go to another chart. Uh, I've got a, a list of the leading stocks and some forex uh, markets up here, just picked randomly. Um, 
So let's go to the end here. Um, first of all, I have to go back to a weekly chart on Amazon. Look for our setup where, again, which way is our averages? Is the 20 above the 2? Then we want to trade long. Is the histogram blue? Um, yes, then we want to trade long. So we've got a, a, an opportunity here. Uh, we've got an opportunity, you know, in this area here. Uh, we've got an opportunity in this area here. And we've got an opportunity here, all right, on Amazon. <laughs> now, there's waste. There's another layer of the onion which has resets and so forth like that, but I'm not going to get into that. It's all in the manual. Um, I've heard many times from people who bought this that they've never seen anything like it, that it's way, it's not difficult, but it's m much more sophisticated than simple, you know, A crosses B, or if this happens, then do that, because the market's never that simple. And if you've traded it for any length of time, you can appreciate that. Okay, uh, again, all we're going to do now when we go to this uh the dailies is look for divergence. So we had our buy right here. We have divergence. We turn up. So somewhere in here is our buy. Uh, don't have any divergence here. Uh, have it in the have it in the big oscillator, but um, that's probably not what I'm going to do. Honestly, uh, this just didn't have divergence for me at all. So I'm not in that one. Um, let's go back and see if we can grab one of these other ones. Okay. Um, do we have any divergence here? Mm. Yeah, so we have lowers here, and we've got higher here. So when it turns up, somewhere around in here, we do have a buy signal. Uh, was there one more line that I put on this chart? Uh, I guess not. Okay, let's skip ahead and see what else we've got here. Uh, okay, this is the Australian dollar, completely different than, than Amazon or Apple, completely different. Uh, same rules. Let's first go to the weekly, get our big picture perspective and what we want to do. And of course, if you're using, you could use, you know, for interday, I usually use daily in like 100 minute because 100 minute divides the day into quarters. So basically, that's what I do. Um, we've got a weekly setup here in Scoop. And we've got, now this would be a sell one because everything's below zero. Your moving average is below the 200, so that look, that's a sell potential setup. Um, uh, here is this could be a failure because you know not everything works. So let's look here and see what if there was an actual setup there because that does right here um, it does meet the requirements of a long. Um, so we'll go back and see on the daily if we actually had an entry there set up or not because I don't know. Okay, um, so this was a this was a sell. There's recent one, so yeah, we absolutely had uh, divergence showing up here. Um, and I'm showing you the basic scoop stuff here. There's more, there is more sophisticated stuff than this for sure. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about how we take profits with it as well. Um, but let me scroll back here and see if I can't find one that didn't work. Um, this one was a buy. So did I have any any um, yeah, I definitely had divergence here. And actually, you know what? That's not even that bad of a buy because it moved from um, 76.97 up to, where am I here? Um, 77.85. You know what? In Forex, 90 points in the Aussie is actually a pretty good move. So this actually wasn't a bad trade at all, um, but it definitely had the same uh, the same setup. So I'm going to do one more. Uh, just let me scroll ahead here and let, let me get a stock or something that's completely unrelated. Um, okay, um, Boeing. You know what? I can. Well, let's do Boeing. I was going to say let's not do it because it's been going one way for the last years and years. But um, let me go back to the weekly. See what we got as a setup. So I've got potential here. I've got potential here, I've got potential here, and you, again, when you're trading stocks, they all, it's not a, it's a market of stocks, they all trade differently, so um, you're going to find different things every day if you're finding, if you're following a portfolio of stocks. 
So let's go back to the daily and see if we got anything set up for buys. Again, um, pretty clearly we do there with our divergence. Um, I'm just going to um, I'll hold, I'll take questions after, but if anyone has any questions about the divergence or how this sets up, just let me know, and we'll <clears throat> we'll go back and do it again after. But I hope it's pretty clear. Uh, right here and right here, even though those were good buy signals, and we actually may have some ways to get into those that are in the manual. Uh, the one I'm showing you right now um, does not have any divergence to it. Um, so um, uh, no entries right there, <clears throat> at least according to the rules that we've talked about here. Um, does this one have anything? Uh, yeah, it does. Remember, we're using weekly, so this line could be off by a bit here. But yeah, um, definitely have divergence. And uh, when it turns up from this divergence here, um, we want to buy somewhere in here. <clears throat> okay, well, how do you take profits on this stuff? Well, um, there's many ways that we do that. Um, one of our first profit objectives is um, if is the oscillator crossing the uh, – crossing the, um, the scoop trend, which is this black line. Uh, you can take profits on the first penetration or within about three bars after, okay? So uh, that penetration would be a pretty small profit on this particular trade. It would have been up in here someplace. Um, <clears throat> so that's one of the ways we take profits. Let me go back and s see one of my other trades here. Okay. Um, Again, now, uh, profits here would be taken as the market penetrates it up here. That's your first profit objective. And you can hang on for your second one and use this as your trailing stop when the oscillator comes back through. So in that case, um, you would still be long on that trade. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the next market here and see what I have. Uh, Forex Canada dollar, too close to the Aussie. We'll leave that. Okay, here's something completely unrelated again, the euro. Uh, doesn't really trade with the Aussie at all or with stocks much. Um, so let's look at the weekly. <clears throat> See what we have. This It's the same procedure no matter what time frames you're using or um, what, uh, what stocks you're using. So if we had a... Um, <clears throat> If we had a, uh, a setup here, we'll go back to the daily and, and see what we have. And we'll show you how to take profits on that one. Um, okay, so do I have divergence? I do have divergence. It's amazing how many times it sets up so nicely for us. Right here and right here. Now, where is my first profit objective? Well, about three days past the crossing, so you know somewhere in here. But if since we are using weeklies as well, that's the other thing you can do is is take your profits in the higher time frame. If you if you are looking for a little bit bigger picture, so in that case your profits would be when it crosses here or within three bars after, so somewhere in here, um, and then you use a trailing stop uh, on the rest, which would be the cross back through here. Uh, <clears throat> So that's a, a basic primary um, introduction to how I use the scoop indicator. There are other parts of the package. Uh, there's a system called the API system, which bases, is based on the same philosophy, although it's a rule-based, completely automated system. Um, I'll just run it quickly for you on the S&P and show you what that the the, uh, the results look like, and then we'll put it up on a few charts and uh, watch it go. Okay, all right, so there's the equity curve uh, for the strategy. You can see it's uh, uh, pretty smooth, um, uh, pretty consistent. It's a very short-term strategy, um, good if you're trading like short-term options or something like that. Let me apply it here to, to, um, uh, to this chart. Okay, hold on. What have I done wrong here? Um, a couple of different versions. One has just a little bit longer time frame holder than the other. That's all. So, 
Um, <clears throat> so you can see it's fairly short term. Um, sells, sells here, um, you know, sells here, um, and so forth. Okay, oops, we are on, it usually runs best on daily, so um, you can see it's much more active now uh, on the daily chart. So um, trades both long side and uh, short side, so um, you get, and it's based on stocks. That's based on the euro. So this really runs more on stocks than it does than it does on the on, uh, currencies and so forth. So um, <clears throat> a much better picture uh, right here. Uh, that's Forex again. No, General Electric. Now uh, you can see uh, it trades the downtrends and downtrends and tries to trade the uptrends and uptrends. Uh, that's Gold Corp, General Motors. A lot of sales recently, obviously. Um, if we went back to Boeing, we'd see more buys. Okay, here's some here where you know we have buys, but again, it's all automated for you. It's a it's a great adjunct uh, to the scoop indicator. Uh, it's different logic, but uh, similar principles. So um, uh, this ribbon up here, just uh, don't worry about that. It's it's in the manual, but it's probably um, an extraneous part uh, that we don't even need. Okay, so uh, let's see. I think that's uh, that's the basics of what I wanted to show you guys. I think you know, hopefully, you can see that the scoop is is pretty easy. I've showed you the first couple layers of the onion and how to use it. There's more in the manual, um, but um, that's how she works. And um, if you have any questions, I'm not seeing any questions. I don't know if if Hunter's in with me still. Um, if there are any, um, yeah, there there was uh, one question here. Um, were we drawing the divergence by the red line and not the blue histogram? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, that's a really good question, actually. Thanks for asking it. Um, yeah, I usually do it by the scoop oscillator, which is the red line. Um, you know, you, yes, I would say your answer is yes. You know, you can. Use, that's where the discretionary part comes in. If you really wanted to be long, I guess you could use the the big oscillator, but. Um, I usually use just a red line. You're going to get plenty of that. If you're if you're trading a portfolio of stocks, you don't need to look for trades. There, there'll be trades. Like I said, when you see something like this, you realize when you're using this system here, you really realize it is a market of stock because they don't all signal together by any means. That's a good question. Thanks. Okay. Um, there might be a couple of – I'd encourage you in the audience, just go ahead and uh, uh, type in – um, any questions that you have uh, while you guys are doing that, you know, I, I kind of wanted to cover a couple of things with this. One of the main reasons I enjoy doing uh, webinars with Joe is because again, there, there's multiple parts to trading and there's so many webinars that we do that are um, uh, focused on the math. Okay, focused on the candlesticks and the candle patterns and, and uh, the moving averages, et cetera. But there's so much more to trading um, and that's really what we want to focus on. And that's what we, we intended on focusing on with the, uh, enlightened training with Joe. And that is not only covering how to, um, have a, a good mindset, but also have a system that you can follow step by step, because I think, and, and, uh, Joe, you might agree, um, uh, one of the major steps in having a good trading mindset is having a set system to follow. You do the same thing every single day in and out. Um, Absolutely. I mean, it's hard to find that, but yeah, um, you need some sort of methodology. Otherwise you are going to Las Vegas and you're going to, you know, it's hard. The trainings, trading is both hard and easy. And I think we kind of, in a way, covered both sides of that today. Um, you know, we overcomplicate it. Um, you know, but sorry, it's, it's both hard and easy and you're hundred percent right. You need some sort of methodology, not easy to find one that works. That's for sure. Uh, and then when you do, um, you got to keep messing it up. So, um, but once you do, when you start to just, you can see when we went through these charts here, it looks like, oh, this really is trading really that easy. Once your head's together and you have a decent system, it, you, you know, it, it's not as hard as we make it. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And and there's a couple of folds to that. And again, it, it's eliminating the hype and the, and the emotion out of the the um, uh, out of trading, you know, that whole 
um, just one more indicator uh, oh. thing. You know, I, I love yeah. that. Oh, just one more indicator, and it's going to work yep. great. But, uh, yeah, because your yeah. brain wants perfection, and uh, but as I said, you know, the science of that is that's only part of your brain. The, the other parts get overwhelmed by your desire for perfection, and then that causes stress, and then stress causes you not to make good decisions. And so, yeah, uh, if you can stand back and realize, you know, you aren't going to be perfect and keep it simple, have a strategy that works, and, um, yeah, it's you're 100% correct. Yeah, and, you know, that, that's also one of the things that I really like um, about this system is it does come with uh, system tests. Um, this is a, a one of the things that that makes this uh, this add-on pretty exceptional is the fact that it does come with system tests. In other words, you can prove it to yourself that the system works and kind of put your mind at ease. Uh, we saw an example a little bit earlier, Joshua, the the uh, the S and P. Um, you know, you look at that system test and you say, okay, well, as long as I follow steps A, B, and C, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to get results. Of course, you're not going to win every time, but, uh, you know, as long as you're winning and you're, you're uh, relatively consistently, you have good wins, you're capturing profit, et cetera, um, you're managing your trades, and all of these things are, are covered very effectively in these training modules that we put together with Joe. Um, yeah. I Let's, think that was uh, a great idea. Sorry. Sorry. No, go, go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, the modules that you guys came up with that idea. Like I've gotten so many emails from people who say, you know what, this is the, you know, like I got two today actually from people saying, you know what, I love how you do this or I love how you have the different layers or um, I, it's been really well received and it, as part of a broader education and not just here's an indicator. Good luck with it. You know, so yeah, it was a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, another question we have here, does the scoop set of indicators work equally well on stocks or is it a system more asset specific for its performance? No, the, the, the actual scoop, the one, like the system that I sent you, um, each market has its own personality. So sorry, the system that we went through, which was the API system, which has the exact buy and sells on the chart. That works better with stocks. Uh, stocks have their own personalities, and although it works across a broad cross-section of stocks, most stocks, there are some that it doesn't do as well on, for sure, uh, but it doesn't seem to do as well on currencies. Currencies, you know what, they, uh, for whatever reason, they each, each market has its own personality. So the system is based on, on, on stocks, the API system, but the scoop itself, uh, we went through, you know, uh, the... Uh, we probably should have done gold too. Actually, I didn't get to gold, but scoop is, is the same. Uh, the indicator and you know the layers of the onion that I showed you about, starting with the higher time frame, then looking for the setup, and then trying to find the entry in the lower time frame, and how to take your profits and so forth. That's the same no matter what market. There isn't, there is really no difference between its efficacy on uh, euros or gold or um, you know cattle or IBM or Apple or you know. That, but it doesn't really matter. It's it's there for all of it. Yeah, and, and another thing to note on that is, you know, again, because it does come with system tests, these are things that, that you can look at as a trader yourself, test it on the different markets. And it's something that, you know, when I'm uh, doing uh, seminars, uh, you know, all over the world, I'll, I'll talk about markets having different um, – personalities and, and you're exactly oh, right on that sure. show and, and yeah. that's that's the whole point of having a system tester like the one in metastock and when we take the philosophy behind joe's system and integrate that into um the system tester we can find out the best markets uh that that this works on yeah um another question uh do you avoid trading through earnings that's a good question um <laughs> You know what? I know that the, the, the correct answer is probably yes, because it's a crapshoot, but I'm not sure that it is, honestly. I'm not a, actually a – when I put a position on the day before earnings, probably not. But, um, you know, I th here's what I think. I think generally not all the time <sighs> – well, it depends. If you got something that can have earnings gaps that are monstrous, then, you know, maybe. But um, I've certainly held stuff through earnings before. Uh, if the setup's right, generally what happens is 
it, it it's foretelling that that that's the way the market wants to go, and the news tends to confirm um, your analysis. Now, it doesn't happen all the time for sure, um, so I guess you could say it's a matter of you know how much risk do you want to take. I think generally the news will confirm what the setup's telling you, although you know, like anything, it's not nothing's going to work all the time. So. I don't look for it for sure, but I would hold through it. Um, you know, if it's something crazy like, you know, Netflix or, or Tesla or something where you can move a hundred dollars or $50 on an earnings report, probably not. But you know, if it's Pfizer or Merck or something where, you know, it's going to be within a penny then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question here. What frequencies do you recommend? I assume time period is. Yeah, you know what? The, the great thing is on this, it does it, it. You know, this really goes down to how do markets move? Uh, can they? Can the market uh, really go anywhere without this system getting a setup? And no, it can't. You know, markets can only go sideways, up or down. If they're going dead sideways, you're not going to get any setups in this group. It's not going to set up for you. So you don't have to worry about being chewed up in a sideways market because this won't set up. Uh, so if the market's going to go directionally, you know, it's going to go up three, down two, up three, down one, whatever, and you're going to get you're going to get entries. Uh, the market really can't it really can't do what it does without this at some point uh, uh, signaling. You know, um, it, it, I hate to make it sound over simple, but the market can only do three th three things. Up, down, or sideways, and sideways, this isn't going to give you anything to do. So it's going to try to get you into dips in a trend, or you know, uh, you know, rallies in a downtrend. That's what it does. Market can't really get away from this because um, it, there's, it's basically the way markets move. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, that's the important thing: is not not, you know, a lot of times when you don't have a system to trade, you're you're looking for a reason to buy or you're looking yep. for a reason to sell and you're trying to make these indicators up to where they give you more yep. and more signals. Oh, One that's of the right. things that, yep. that that I like about the scoop is is it's only going to give you a signal when there should be a signal. And yep. again, that that is again following the philosophy of hey, I have a system, I'm going to stick to that system uh, because I understand that I've tested it and I know it works. That is one of the biggest steps in eliminating the hype and emotion from your trading and and uh, yeah I, I I've done I, I've done a lot of uh, emotional trading before. Um, anybody, who hasn't? Yeah, yeah. Anybody who every, bought every Bitcoin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, if, even if you read the Market Wizards, which is an old book now, but I think there's a couple of them. But every one of those guys who's now you know multi billionaires have done you know emotional trading because that's where your brain's wired. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Uh, in the expert advisor, is the entry signal based on divergences or something else? Uh, in the expert advisor, no. Uh, it's you know because of this. Remember we talked about layers of the onion, which is a really important concept. Uh, there's only so much you, we can program um, without having mainframes. Um, so it's much easier for me to show you this concept here uh, and make it a visual. Uh, to go to program, it would be a you know at least for me um, a whole different ball game. So uh, what I consider the flagship is the scoop, and I've showed you a couple of things that it can do. There are others uh, for sure, um, but uh, no, it's not it's not programmed as a system because there's it's just just too many things it can do, too many layers. Now again, the scoop is uh, uh, the the system as a whole. It comes with four expert advisors. It comes mm -hmm. with one template, uh, nine explorations, two system tests, uh, uh, three indicators. It comes with, um, in my opinion, the most important part are, are the five advanced training modules. Now these are videos that Joe did himself, where he is walking you through every single aspect of his trading system. Um, along with, he actually wrote an advanced training course manual. So it's not just a, hey, this is the indicator and, and this is what it does. It's more, it gets a lot more into the actual interpretation of how to use the system. Um, 
where to take your your profits, uh, where to put your stops, yeah. etc. So again, there's, there's a lot more than what we went through today. Yeah, it, a exactly. Lot, a, lot, a lot more. Yeah. And that's really what we wanted to do uh, is put together an entire system. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what these training modules are for. That's uh, why Joe put together an advanced training because we can't sit on the line with you guys on, on a webinar and, uh, you know, for, for four hours or five hours or six hours and cover everything that, that needs to be uh, taken care of uh, or, you know, checked off your trading list and have uh, you as the trader actually comprehend every single bit and, and soak that all up. So the cool thing about the modules is uh, they go under the My Training section on your uh, My Downloads page at Metastock. So you can watch them. Uh, you can uh, watch them over and over again. You can read the manual over and over again. So this is really kind of training at your pace. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to stay aw away from is the shotgun training approach where we throw a webinar at you uh, that teaches you the whole system, but you don't have any time to absorb any of it. So these are things that you can access. Once you have the scoop suite, you have access to all of this uh, training. Yeah, and we talk a little bit about the, the neuroscience part too. Maybe, maybe not as much about the actual neuroscience part, but at least about, in a broad sense, you know, Here's what you're up against. Here's what you can do about it. Yeah. So, so again, with Metastock, we've been uh, in business now for about 30 years. We've had the number one technical analysis software in our category uh, over 25 of those years. So we wanted to take the best tools in the industry and we wanted to uh, take the best systems and the best traders in the industry and put them together in a course that you can understand and that you can apply, uh, you know, moving forward. The Scoop Suite is very, very, very visually intuitive. Um, it's easy to understand, especially with the course training that goes along with it. Follow steps A, B, and C, and you will consistently uh, get trades. Now, normally this is actually sold elsewhere for a thousand dollars, a little under a thousand. On my dollars. website, actually, if you go to jdtradingsystems.com, you'll see he's right. Somehow I got talked down to six hundred, but anyway, okay. <laughs> I I I uh, I did you all in the audience a favor. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. thank, thank me letter. I, I I accept chocolate. I accept yeah. uh, gift cards, etc. <laughs> yeah. um, it is actually on sale. Uh, this is on our website. It's actually six hundred and ninety nine dollars. But uh, for attending this webinar, um, we would give you another hundred dollars off. So it's five hundred and ninety nine dollars. Um, for everything that we've, we've talked about today as far as uh, the uh, scoop suite along with all of the training, along with the advanced training manual, et cetera. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can get this. The uh, way I would recommend you do is just come into metastock.com forward slash sales chat. One of our reps will be happy to set you up with that. Just make sure that you said that you attended this webinar. Uh, you can also call us if you're in the States, 801-506-0900. Uh, you can also order it online at metastock.com forward slash uh, Duffy A. Um, now, one of the last things I want to do here, uh, Joe, is simply thank you very much for taking your time today with us and kind of educating us a little bit more on your philosophy, both with uh, a, a few life lessons. I love it, as well as your philosophy on trading. Um, you and the audience, thank you very much for being with us here for, for about an hour. If you have any questions, contact us. Contact Joe. Uh, he's always happy to answer any questions. Um, Joe, any, yep. any, last, uh, any last things to add? No. I mean, when you, what I found doing this stuff, honestly, truthfully, um, is when you teach, you learn. Um, I'm, I do better trading um, when I've been through this stuff um, just because I have to refresh about everything, you know, go through your stops, keep it simple. So, yeah, um, I appreciate uh, you having me. Wonderful. Uh, so thanks again, everyone. Um, all of you in the audience, let us know. We'll stick around here for a few more questions and type in, uh, type in answers if needed. Uh, otherwise, I, I hope uh, that you all have a wonderful morning or evening or afternoon, wherever you're at. Joe, again, thank you. 
Um, and as always, happy trading. Thanks, guys.